I don't think Andrew Barry's looking at it like that. Mm-hmm. And I really hope he's not. I, I think every – this is where it's across all sports. The price has to be right. If he performs similar to this year, he's getting less than $43 million. $43 million obviously is the benchmark that we're setting with Josh Allen, but I wouldn't put him getting less than $38 million, which is within that $5 million gap, which – Baker has quickly, very quickly risen up the ranks of Browns quarterbacks. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am your host, Justin Harold, as always, and with me, my co-host, Jeff Santa. Today, we're going to be talking to you guys about a little contract situation going on uh, in light of the Josh Allen 43-year um, contract deal that just got done last last week. 43, 43 million. 43 million a year um, <laughs> for six years for a grand total of 258 million, uh, 258 million, sorry. Um, and so obviously as us Browns fans, that has ignited a passion for us to talk about contract situations with Baker, Josh Allen, and Lamar Jackson, something that Jeff has been very passionate about over the past week. So, Jeff, how are you doing, and what's going on through that mind of yours? I'm doing good. I, I'm ready to re-talk about this. This is something <laughs> that we've already discussed, but this was before you see the urgency from Andrew Barry getting the Nick Chubb deal done. Yep. We didn't know if we were going to get a whole lot of deals this summer. I think this might be the summer of limbo for some of the guys. We hear rumors and talks that Denzel, Denzel Ward might be, his contract might be getting situated, but we know Baker's the big one. Yep. At the end of the day, we know the quarterback's the big one. We know that Baker's and the city, that that's a big one for us. And we have the Josh Allen news, like you said, $258 million, $43 million a year. That's a lot of money. The quarterback position is the premium, so you cannot blame the Buffalo Bills there for the most part, but I think it's going to be interesting discussion between me and you today. Yeah, absolutely, and just to make it clear about how much money that is, he's the second highest paid quarterback right behind Patrick Mahomes and right ahead of Dak Prescott, who got his deal done earlier last year. Um, Obviously, a lot of quarterbacks, you know, and a lot of teams just for this matter, get to paying really quickly after – success has been had and so Josh Allen last year put on a very close MVP um, type year right behind Aaron Rodgers I would say and was therefore compensated after leading the Bills to uh, the AFC championship game and losing to the Patrick Mahomes Chiefs so obviously he got paid and he's very young he's 25 years old Um, But again, a lot of money to be putting out there for a quarterback. And I think that has been one of the biggest issues that Jeff has just in general with a lot of these contracts. If you look at them, it's just how much they're, uh, you know, not necessarily shooting themselves in the foot to, uh, you know, build around. But obviously, it takes a lot of money to pay these guys on a yearly basis. So, Jeff, what is your uh, what is your thought process with all this? Honestly, I think that's a that's a good topic of conversation. I think that the quarterback money is getting a little bit out of hand. I know that these guys need to get paid. I do understand that. And I know that Tom Brady is the outlier, but that's somebody who I like to bring up a lot just because over his whole career, he's really taken a nice pay cut when needed in order to make sure that his teams are good around him. And I think you could even see this, say the same thing about big Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, he was a guy who was totally killing that organization's, you know, their payroll, I believe last year. And then he restructured, said he was coming back Two guys who were closer to the end of their career. So a little bit different circumstances, but Josh Allen is literally getting paid more money in this contract than Tom Brady's made over his whole career. That's crazy. I think that these contracts Big ones like this, while you lock up your potential, you know, you hope that you lock up your your franchise quarterback. These puts these contracts in the numbers put teams at such a disadvantage after like two or three years. Yeah. And uh, right now they're not even guys, you know, mentioned Ben Roethlisberger and Tom Brady. They're not even top 10 paid quarterbacks right now. Um, And obviously, you know, a lot of people like to consider Tom Brady the go and obviously probably still one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, Top five for sure, but he's not making that money. And obviously you saw last year, he 
that Tampa Bay team was stacked, absolutely stacked. And they managed to retain the majority, if not all those players from that uh, team because Tom Brady took a pay cut. And obviously that's just something that, you know, he has the luxury of doing because, uh, you know, even with you making the point about him not making as much as Josh Allen in this one contract, um, he's still, he has still made plenty of money, but obviously the one thing that Tom Brady has going for him is that he has multiple Super Bowls won compared to anyone else left in this league. So obviously a big point to be made there. And going back to just the, the statement of Josh Allen's contract, you see it every time a, you know, a contract extension is up for debate with a lot of these players, you know, Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, um, a lot of these guys who are quality quarterbacks, absolutely quality quarterbacks, um, they end up pushing the contract to what is, you know, what probably will at this point never be surpassed by the Patrick Mahomes 50 million a year uh, for 10 years deal. But um, they push the boundary of what those contracts are and they always make it the most paid quarterback when those extensions come up. Obviously, Josh Allen is behind Patrick Mahomes, but he's making more than Dak Prescott. So, and Dak Prescott's making more than Deshaun Watson. A lot of these deals are just, you know, absurd amount of money and for some of them they're not even for the best player on their team and I think that's something that we'll probably get into later on in this discussion but just crazy numbers that we see here all right so I have a question I have a question for you and because I've seen you I saw you put out a little thread about this and I've seen this argument but here's I just need a little clarification because I think I understand I think I understand but I might not understand so this whole argument, and I'm just going to summarize what Justin has said, I think, and what other people in the Cleveland sports, you know, talking community, people that talk about Cleveland sports, what they say. So basically, it's like, if you believe in Baker, mm-hmm. the money is never an issue for you. Yes. But if you don't, then it's like, then the money is an issue. Yes. You, 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 so that's basically like, if you don't, if you don't believe in them, then you're just not going to pay them, B- Baker. Or if you do believe in him, then you're going to pay him basically whatever he's asking. Yeah, is that a fan? Pers- that's a fan perspective, correct? I think it's I think it's both what you just see in the general public because you can and you know the consensus of quarterbacks being paid in the past. Obviously, you and I have talked about Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, two guys who you know you look at their careers now; they are nowhere near top end quarterbacks, but they did get paid that top quarterback money because their franchises thought, hey, they had success at some point in their career, a lot of good success. Um, a lot of people thought Carson Wentz at one point was an MVP and obviously Jared Goff led his team to the Super Bowl. So, you know, I think it's something that, you know, if you as a franchise think that this is your guy, then yeah, the money's never going to be a question. But obviously, if you're a fan, I can understand if you don't, I can understand the whole like being skeptical about paying these guys. And obviously, I love your take on what the money does, because obviously we have seen the Browns dish out deals to players to, you know, build around Baker. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, if you, if you believe in Baker, the money is going to be within 5 million of what that top quarterback, you know, position is. And if you don't, it's just, all right, well then you got to move on. So, so you're even saying that from like an Andrew Barry perspective, like, yeah. but see, here's, here's where I disagree with that because there's you got two scenarios here. You got this offseason, obviously, and then you have letting them play a year. Mm-hmm. So here's my thing. If the if 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 Andrew Barry really believed in him, then why haven't we just offered him 43 mil, 44 mil? I don't understand why if if that's the if that's how some people see it, I just don't get why there hasn't been, you know, a $250 million extension on the table. I don't think Andrew Barry's looking at it like that. Mm -hmm. And I really hope he's not. I I think every, this is where it's across all sports. The price has to be right. Mm -hmm. I don't really care if he's, I don't, if he's a franchise quarterback potential, that's different from being the clear cut franchise quarterback. I know you could say that everybody has franchise quarterback, you know, potentially could all group them into that, but Mahomes is a big outlier. I think Lamar Jackson MVP is a big outlier. His contract talk will obviously be different because of his play style. I think Josh Allen, he, Josh Allen could be a guy who ends up like a Carson Wentz. I, I don't, I can't rule that out, but that's the same way with Baker. So my thing is that there's no reason to pay him this year because now you have a benchmark, Mm -hmm. throw Lamar Jackson out. 
if if we let if we just let Baker ride one more year and Josh Allen outperforms him again mm-hmm. in all statistical categories, which some categories he's basically given. He's given all the rushing categories. He's got he's kind of like a dual threat almost. He has a lot of rushing touchdowns in his career. He's mobile with his legs. But That's if Baker, boy. yeah, yeah. If Baker doesn't perform as if he performs similar to this year, he's getting less than 43 million. That's just how I'm seeing that. Yeah, and 43 million obviously is the benchmark that we're setting with Josh Allen, but I wouldn't put him getting less than 38 million, which is within that 5 million gap, which is still, you know, a ton of money. And obviously with that big sigh of relief, you know, it's a big chunk of money. Um, The problem with getting the deal done now, and this is why I think you saw the Nick Chubb deal get done and you're hearing that Denzel Ward is getting his deal kind of talked about more urgently than Baker Mayfield with quarterbacks. If you, even if Baker just plays as he did last year, he's going to get that top quarterback money. But with other positions, it's not that simple. And that's why you kind of see guys get their deals done a lot earlier than others. Because if Denzel Ward goes out this year and we don't pay him before this year happens, he's fully healthy. He puts on an all pro season, then bam, he's in, immediately increased his value by. I'm going to just throw an absurd number out there because I haven't looked at cornerback money, but you know, he's been hurt. He's missed a lot of time. He probably increases his pay a year by five to $10 million, which is an extreme amount. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously we know that miles Garrett is getting $25 million a year, 25,000 or, Oh my God, 25 million a year. Um, sorry about that. But you know, it doesn't matter because Baker Mayfield, you saw what Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott missed a full season, almost a full season. He played uh, around mm-hmm. five games And he still ended up getting paid top quarterback money even after he missed. And it's not to say that Dak Prescott doesn't deserve that money, but he did get hurt and end up still getting paid that money. So it's really a, a, a situational thing where, listen, if you're lowballing Baker this year, which I don't know if that's what's happening or if they're just trying to take care of other contracts first, then when it comes to next year and he plays just the same, you, you're not going to be able to do it. And that's fine. Like if, if that's 38 million to 45 million or 43 million, that's what it's going to be. But if he balls out 43 million plus, if he doesn't, it's still going to be that 38 to 43 million. I think, so here's the thing. There's I'm like, I've said there's, I don't think there's any reason to try to get a contract on this summer. Mm-hmm. A lot of it being, you see the top end guys who some of them we've known they were top end guys, but you see them in the second year of a system and you have numbers to go off of as far as improvement. I think a big one is Aaron Rodgers in the Matt LaFleur system. He did exponentially better in year two with Matt LaFleur than he did in year one, which I think is a given. I think that that's a fair argument that Baker Mayfield hasn't been in the same system, Mm -hmm. but at least this is where I'm going to call you out. And this is where I'm going to call some other fans out Please do. because we did a video. We did a video on this. I'll, I'll put it up in the eye in the top, right? We talked about expectations for this year. We expect that's where me and you agreed. We expect to be, to win a playoff game minimum. We expect to be in the AFC, you know, championship game almost. Yes. Super bowl is right above it. Yep. Anything lower than an AFC championship game might be a disappointment with this roster. It sounds crazy to say, but we have to stop babying the Browns. True. I transpose that argument to the same way with the quarterback. Why should we shell out money for this guy just because he's been the best quarterback in the last 20 years? Really not a hard feat to do. If we're going to hold that same standard to the team, shouldn't we just hold that same standard to the, because here's the thing. I don't think he's getting 38 million minimum. I think he should get less than that. If his play dictates that. I think that the, the biggest problem I see with Browns fans on Twitter and just in general, is that everybody thinks this season is going to be some sort of perfect, hunt, like easy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm misreading that. Maybe it's just a lot of optimism, which I like. I'm optimistic and I'm excited too, but I'm feeling this sense of like, oh, it's going to be so easy. When in, in fact, our schedule this year is way harder than it was last year. Obviously we have revamped defense. That might be a struggle but you have some positives, you know, you're bringing back the offense You're in the second year system, but everybody thinks Baker's like putting up MVP numbers this year. We haven't even started yet. I agree that that should be the expectation, but what if he doesn't, what if he goes, what if he goes 30 interceptions and or 30 touchdowns and 25 interceptions, is he getting 38 million? If we're, if we win a first round playoff game, 
because our defense has five turnovers again. I think this whole he's going to be within $5 million of Josh Allen doesn't make any sense because if he plays, if he plays like he did when he was a sophomore, his sophomore season Mm -hmm. in the second year of a Stefanski, you know, setup, then that throws that whole outfit out the window where you're saying, oh, he needs to be in the same system for two years. That whole argument's gone if he if he regresses from last season. Yeah. And I mean, that's a great point. You, you're you talking about how, you know, Aaron Rodgers, an all time great, um, you know, even him with LaFleur had a, mm-hmm. a, a little bit of a bumpy first season and then obviously came out that second season and this past season um, and won MVP. And he was amazing. Um, a lot of things that I've just noticed with, you know, a lot of these situations and it's, you know, we alluded to it earlier with Baker that he hasn't had the easiest time in this league, he, you know, being drafted by the Browns is not an easy situation for sure. I agree. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll stay on the track of Josh Allen. Josh Allen, um, you know, he came into a team where the season before they drafted him, they were a playoff team. They lost They lost in the wild card. So they were already a good team, uh, ended up trading up in the draft to get the pick to get Josh Allen. They thought very highly of him. Uh, didn't have to start right away, but – Nonetheless, he still had his head coach for the past three years and his offensive coordinator for the past three years. Now, Josh Allen didn't do great his rookie year, and I'm not going to put anything against that. But that sophomore season isn't that much better. I mean, he threw for 20. He's the starter all six games, only threw for 20 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Not bad. Um, But again, 3000 yards, not, you know, fantastic. Definitely not something that you're you're thinking that Josh Allen would do in his second full year, but he goes on to have this last season where he does phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He's asked to do more. He asked to throw the ball more has a crazy good season, but that's his third year. So obviously, you know, Josh Allen's timeline between him entering the league and his contract extension was a lot better paced than what Baker Mayfield's is. Baker Mayfield is going into his second season with OC head coach the same. And that's great. And we might not see a huge jump, but what happens if we could see that third year happen where he makes an even greater jump like Josh Allen did and potentially puts himself into that conversation of MVP. Now, the last thing that you were saying at the end of your conversation was, well, what if he regresses? Is that likely? I don't think so, mainly because he's not being asked to do the things that he was asked to do in that second year. Uh, In general, we were 28th in pass attempts as an offense, which already just tells you that he's not being asked to throw the ball a ton. Uh, 486 attempts compared to his 534 attempts under Freddie Kitchens, which is crazy. But obviously, he put up better touchdown numbers and better interception numbers than that previous season, which is, I think, obviously, we all know uh, is greater than what we would have wanted. But to your point, if he does what he does in the third year, he's still going to be in that range of 38 to 43 million. If he regresses, which is, there's nothing to show that he will do that. Obviously we'll have to wait to see the season play out, but I think that's more unlikely than Baker just shooting up and having a phenomenal year. I think that, I just think that, I don't know if the whole argument gets a fair handshake from a lot of Browns fans, which is understandable. I don't want to think about, a quarterback either I don't want to think about paying people an exorbitant amount of money even though it's pretty much going to happen I don't want to think about that I just want to think about the season two yeah and be optimistic and be open-minded but I'm someone who looks at it and says there's a possibility that he could play not very well Mm -hmm. I think you could say that for anybody but still it's not like well if he this is the year for him to play his best year, even if he puts up numbers, here's what, here's how, where I'm at. Even at this point, even if he puts up the same numbers he did last year and Josh Allen outperforms them, maybe he'll get 38 million, but I'm not thrilled with that. I'm really not. I think that we could probably, and here's the thing. I think he's going to want Josh Allen money. Maybe yeah. I'm, maybe I don't, I don't, I'm not as Asian. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I think he's going to want 43 million now especially because he's going to say, oh, well, you know, I took the Browns to the playoffs and this, that, but that, that's not an argument for me. If we're looking at it as far as excellence in 
the league and excellence in the front office, teams do not operate like that. Teams do not say we've been, we haven't had a good quarterback in 20 years. Let's just, you know, let's pay this guy over market value because he's taken us to the playoffs in back-to-back years. I understand that that sounds counterintuitive. That sounds counterproductive, but teams don't operate like that, especially teams that are, you know, that build legacies. I think you could say, you know, you could see that with the Tampa Bay team. I mean, obviously Jameis Winston didn't have that team in the playoffs, but People thought Jameis Winston was good enough to be a starter. And then they went out and got Tom Brady and Jameis Winston, you know, he might not even play this year. So it's like, obviously situations are different. I think that's what we could agree on. I think that there's a lot of variables here. The running game with Cleveland, with our team is obviously a lot different than Buffalo that you could say that that either you could hurt stats in some way, or it helps stats. I think it probably deflates Baker's passing stats more. I think we could agree with that, but this is the second year in the league, or this is the second year in a row, knock on wood, that Baker's probably going to have the best offensive line in the league. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see a big jump this year and then you lose Wyatt Teller, I don't see a huge reason to overpay for him. I think that's a a huge point that's being, that's not being talked about is that Baker has probably the best offensive line in the league for two years in a row. So it's this season is make or break for him. And if we can't agree with contract talks, if he plays average and we can't agree with on a number, then that's fine with me. I'm going to trust Andrew Barry over anybody. I think we could agree with that way too. Oh, a thousand percent. You're absolutely right. The problem with what you just said though, is that you mentioned the running backs and you mentioned the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why we can expect, or, you know, maybe not expect who knows what Kevin Stefanski is going to do. Maybe he unleashes Baker. Maybe he lets him pass for over 500 attempts, but the problem with thinking that way is he wasn't asked to do that last year. He was, again, 28th in a passing attempts. Um, doesn't even put him anywhere near Josh Allen or Aaron Rodgers, for that matter, or Tom Brady. But, you know, if he's asked to just do what he did last year, which is 28 att- 28th in attempts, then, yeah, I don't think you're going to see a significant jump in his in his stats. He might have more touchdowns. He might have less interceptions. Could go either way. He could maybe do – worse in those categories, whatever it may be. Hopefully, you know, we don't have those games where last year there were just monsoons happening at First Energy Stadium. But, you know, a lot of that does impact it. I think the idea of, hey, was last year an average season? I think it was an above average season. I think, you know, it's, it's it's his best statistical year, even though he doesn't have as many passing yards as his past two. But Obviously, the number in interceptions is down, which is a great thing. You don't want to be handing the ball over to the other team. But his touchdowns and his yards for the past three years put together are greater than that of Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson passing-wise. Obviously, Lamar Jackson, a completely different story. But, um, you know, and Baker has had uh, three more games than Josh Allen did. But still, even after that huge season that Josh Allen had, he still leads in touchdowns and uh, passing yards. The thing that... I find interesting with, and I I think it's just, you know, I can completely understand your side of the conversation of where, Hey, I don't, I'm not here for just, you know, substandard quarterback play and that's fine. But if you go and you look at the history of Brown's quarterbacks, since they've moved back, there's not a quarterback that's made it three years as a starter. And, you know, Baker has, quickly very quickly risen up the ranks of Brown's quarterbacks in history he's and I'm just looking at stats right now he's six right now behind Brian Sype, Otto Graham, Bernie Kozar, Frank Ryan, Tim Couch five guys who are you know immortal in Brown's fans eyes he is six and he is very close to a lot of these guys in passing yards and touchdowns And obviously these guys have played hundreds of games for the Browns, whereas Baker Mayfield has just barely played about 60 games. And so, yeah, I I can understand your conversation of, Hey, I'm not here for standard play. And if he's just asked to do standard stuff, then he wants huge money. I don't want to pay him. I can understand that. However, what is the alternative? Is the alternative giving the keys to Case Keenum, who when he was given the keys to be a starter in Minnesota and in Denver, he didn't produce. He's a great backup quarterback, and I could trust him to come in if they knock on wood. If something happens to Baker and he's got to sit out a game or he's got to sit out a rest of, you know, two quarters or whatever it is, 
I'll trust Case Keenum to go out and win that game. But what's the alternative if you're not going to re-sign Baker Mayfield, who I think does a lot of things really well. Obviously, um, you, you got to see a lot of that stuff in person and over, you know, watching the games. A lot of things that I think people in the general media who, you know, they're tasked with watching 30 different teams and watching a lot of their games don't really see or really get. So I just want to ask the alternative question of what is the alternative besides paying Baker Mayfield? So here's the thing. I think what, if you don't have good coaching, if you don't have a good coaching staff and you don't have a quarterback, you know, guru that I would say Kevin Stefanski is at least an offensive guru, then it makes more sense to just go ahead and you just pay them. But that's not the situation that we're in. If Freddie Kitchens was the head coach, you know, it would be totally different. I think Baker, I think Baker performing in Freddie Kitchen says a lot more than Baker performing with Kevin Stefanski, obviously, which that's a lot of the argument. That's a lot of the contention, but why not? I understand the quarterback, the quarterback, the quarterback, that's your whole game. That's what the NFL is transposed to, but you see with running backs, you use running backs, you work them, you give them, tuck, give them, you know, you work them to death basically for the first three or four years. And then you just go and draft another one. Mm-hmm. Why can't we do that? Why can't we start a new trend in that direction? If we have a guy who, if we now have a GM that can identify talent and we have a coach who can implement a system, that's going to make sure our quarterback wins. Why can't we, if Baker Mayfield throws 25 touchdowns next year and 25 interceptions, and he comes back in the off season and we make it to the AFC, you know, just say, all right, let's just say we win the first game and lose again. Like we did last year, we win one playoff game and Baker Mayfield regresses and he comes in the off season and says, I want 45 mil. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not paying him that. I don't care. I don't care if we've been in the playoffs two years where I'm not holding our quarterbacks to these little baby boy standards just because we haven't had a good one in two decades. And if he's okay, all right, maybe he goes down to even 40 million. I don't care if he wants 35 after, uh, after playing worse this season than he did last year. I think we could probably settle on that number, but if he comes in and his agent 45, 45, and we want, we want a Mahomes deal or we want a Josh Allen deal, you know, why don't we just pay him 300 million for, you know, a, a six year extension, a seven year extension. No, that's not where I'm at. If, if he's going to be a problem, if he's going to not want to take market value for him and a, trust me, trust me, I don't blame him. I'd be using, if I was his agent, I'd be using the same leverage too. I'd be saying you guys haven't been to the playoffs and blah, blah, blah. I understand, but that's not how organizations run in my mind. If he plays suboptimal this year, worse than he did last year, and he wants a big, big number, he's not willing to budge on just because we've been to the playoffs back to back years. The alternative is you're letting him walk. I don't want that guy in the locker room anyway. I'm not saying this is what he's going to do. And I'm not saying he's going to play subpar, but it's a possibility. I don't hear anybody talking about that this could be an option. All I hear is sunshines and rainbows for the Browns, which is fine. I'd rather have that than negative talk all around because I think that we actually have a premier roster in the league, not like a couple of years ago where we were paper warriors. But if he wants to, if that's the issue, The alternative is letting him walk and drafting somebody else, letting Andrew Barry identify a talented quarterback and then letting Kevin Spansky work his magic on him. Some first round pick. Yeah. And I mean, that's obviously a a conversation that I thought you might bring up, especially with you could look at a team right now that I think they play in a super tough division. They are going to have their time pressed for them. But the 49ers uh, went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, had a phenomenal team, a team that I think is very much like the Browns right now, just mm-hmm. top to bottom offensively, defensively right now, uh, stacked with players. And they went out, they traded a plethora of their future first round picks for Trey Lance. Now, mm-hmm. we, we won't see that. Uh, pay, we may not see that payoff. Uh, This year, uh, he may be behind Jimmy Garoppolo. We will see. But the problem with, and obviously this is a scenario scenario that we would have to go more in depth with and everything. And Mm -hmm. hopefully, you know. But but honestly, honestly, not to interrupt you, but honestly, Jimmy G stayed healthy, Mm -hmm. which I think we could both agree that Baker Mayfield is a more talented quarterback than Jimmy G. Mm -hmm. If if Jimmy G stayed healthy, they just would have rocked with that system. 
and Jimmy G got them to where they were in the first place. And I think he's a, I would call Jimmy G a game manager. Really? Mm -hmm. I think he makes the right decisions, but they wouldn't have had to move on to all those pieces if Jimmy G stayed healthy. And I think that they could have made it with the quarterback, not being their centerpiece. Yeah. Their, their team was very much a, first of all, I think a phenomenal defense uh, Mm -hmm. first off. And then their, their bread and butter was the run game, just like our game is. And so, but Jimmy G, at the time of him getting the contract from the 49ers was very close to top quarterback money. I don't think it was right on top quarterback money, but he's still up there behind a lot of these other guys that we mentioned. I believe he's maybe right outside of top 10 money, um, but that puts him behind Ryan Tannehill, who got a huge deal, Matt Ryan, who has a huge deal, Carson Wentz, who we talked about, Jared Goff even. I still can't believe that Jared Goff deal is a thing, but right. – um, yeah, the, the problem with drafting a quarterback first round is the position that we're going to be in. Unless you're trading those picks to get up to a top 10, top 15, and get a top three quarterback is what your hopes would be. You know, what's to say that quarterback, though, isn't going to flop? Obviously, you know, you're, you're not going to hope that he does, but there's also nothing to say that, look, Jared Goff, Carson Wentz, both guys who were drafted one and two mm-hmm. fell off. It's very easy for a lot of these guys to fall off. Um, Mitchell Trubisky. Two guys, two guys who got paid probably, you know, two guys. Carson Wentz was probably market value because he was an MVP candidate before he got hurt. But Jared Goff, looking back on it, probably above market value that didn't work out too. It's like you could pay someone and it won't work out or you could draft someone and it won't work out. I think that there's, you know, equal arguments there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very tough to find those guys in the later rounds or in the later picks. Obviously, Dak Prescott and Russell Wilson are two guys that have been very successful and were not top first round picks. They weren't even first round picks Mm -hmm. and they're top guys. But again, you look at all the names on this list of quarterbacks being paid right now. There's not a lot of them that you can go out and be like, ah, I know coming out of college, he was going to be the guy. And at a later round pick. And that's the problem with it. Baker Mayfield, I think, has played to a level that there's confidence in his game. I think there's confidence in his game. I think the problem that happened with year two, besides it just being an absolute franchise cluster F, it's just, (laughs) you know, he was doing things out of pocket. He was acting like, you know, he was top man, top gun, you know, just got Odell Beckham Jr. And the, the, I, arrogance of that team is what made a lot of people dislike Cleveland just in general playing them made Richard Sherman go out and flat out lie because he knew that the press would heat it up and Mm -hmm. straight up you know this disenfranchised what people thought about us and it was awful but I think the maturity that we've seen with Baker Mayfield last year and going through training camp and off season this year has been phenomenal you know he's bringing guys to his house he's doing everything that he can outside of contract talks to just be a winning team, which I think is probably going to push these contract talks further and further for the Browns and Baker Mayfield, which is something I know that you don't want in terms of being like, Hey, that's like the bread and butter of what this conversation needs to be. But Mm -hmm. when you can't trace back to before 2002 of when we went last went to the playoffs and to Derek Anderson, who was the last person to want to lead us to double digit wins. I just don't know that there's, like the argument against Baker Mayfield is good enough to not pay him. I think to wrap it up, uh, honestly, to wrap it up, I think you got three, three scenarios here, which uh, if we pay him, if we just, so let's just say, cause all of this is pretty, we're just putting out examples. Yeah. Hypothetical. If we paid him 40 mil this off season, I would be upset. I would be, I don't think he's worth 40 million at this current moment in time. Hit the thumbs down button if you uh, if you hate that take. It helps. It still helps us anyway. Helps just as much as a thumbs up, honestly. Two, he plays really good, which I would love to see, and we do really well. You pay him big money, and you probably lose. You know, you you maybe lose. You probably lose Wyatt Teller. You might lose Denzel, and you know maybe one other piece on defense. Ronnie Harrison probably walks. That's option two. I don't hate that option. I love that option. That's probably the best option. I love the Browns fans talk about that. But if you're going to talk about that option, I think you at least have to mention, 
and I don't like putting bad, bad vibes out there anyway, but I'm going to do it. You have to mention him playing terrible and we overpay him. And then you have Wyatt Teller walk in Denzel and Harrison. Maybe. Yeah. What's the point of that? Or he plays terrible. You can't agree on a number. You trust Barry in the draft. You keep Teller, you keep Ronnie Harrison and you keep Denzel. I don't think that's a terrible option. If push comes to shove worst, ca- if that's the worst case scenario, I think that at least has to be discussed. I know Browns fans, especially diehard Browns fans, people that have been around for a while, don't want to talk about that because the quarterback position has been so bad. But you're not going to settle. I don't see the point of settling. I think of it like, think think of your Pittsburgh. If we pay Baker six years, $40 million annually, I think Pittsburgh's licking their lips. I think they're you know, at the bit thinking that that's a terrible deal and this, that, and the other thing, which I don't know. I think it's up, but they're looking at it from devil's advocate that we just locked up a whole bunch of money on this guy who, you know, he could might not pan out, but that's, that's everybody's situation. I think I kind of think the same way with the bills. That's fine. If he's going to perform, he was going to get paid anyway. If he's not going to perform, they're, they're just torched money for, I mean, for good reason, but they could end up just torching money. So at the end of the day, I just like looking at it from both sides but I do, I expect Baker to take another big step. I expect him to play better than he did last year. And I expect him to be the franchise guy moving forward. That's what I hope. And that's what I want to see from this season. But you got to think about other options as well. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of great things were said here. And I think a lot of them yep. were discussing points, which if you guys, you know, made it this far into the video and absolutely <laughs> just leave us a like, a comment, dislike if you want, and give us a reason why down in the comments, but discuss in the comments, what your guys' thoughts are on some of the things that we talked about. The one thing that I just want to bring up is, you know, Pittsburgh, they're kind of a laughing stock to me because they're at this point, <laughs> they're kind of just like over there and they're like, Oh, if the Browns pay Baker Mayfield, it's such a big miss. Well, have fun with one more year of Ben Roethlisberger losing to no-name quarterbacks and losing to the Browns in the playoffs for the first time in forever. Uh, and then having to decide between Mason Rudolph and uh, Dwayne Haskins. I uh, just want to make that point really relevant that they're, that's the alternative, people. If you don't want to re-sign Baker Mayfield, uh, would you rather have Dwayne Haskins or Mason yeah, Rudolph but, be your well, favorite? It's, the, it's different, though. They're moving off a Hall of Famer. <laughs> We're not, we would not be moving off a Hall of Famer. You're right. You're right. Well, I just wanted to make that point to be uh, a, good a little point. bit of you know, a jab at them. But mm-hmm. with that all being said, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments. Please leave a like a subscribe, a comment, and all that good stuff. And we will have more videos for you later on. Peace.